Okay, what I want to demonstrate with this tutorial is how you can use Dissolve to group data by an attribute field. So I've got a simple example here, which we will make more complex later, of how we can group some information um, that are related by some field. And what I have here is the a map of the United States airports and if you look at the attribute table here you can see that it contains a lot of information such as the facility type um, the effective date the state name and the county um, there is a lot of other information here such as um, addresses the latitude and longitude looks like the elevation is also included in there so there's quite a bit of information so um, right now there's very little geographic boundary or spatial boundary to this information other than it's limited to the United States and I think some of its territories. So when we're looking at this we're trying to find things that are alike. Um, we have some ways to do that, some easier than others. So if I want to group things by state, um, I can look at the attribute table and realize that there is a state name and I can group by that. Now I'm making an assumption that whoever populated this field populated it correctly and upon inspection um, there does seem to be some airports that fall outside of a state political boundary so I'm not sure why that is so I don't know if that's because the jurisdiction of the state extends sometimes beyond its border borders on some of these airports, but I, I'm not 100% sure. So I'm going to turn off some of the topographic and hill shades. So we're just looking at the data itself to start with. So if I want to group data, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to go ahead and use a tool called Dissolve. So I'm going to go into my geoprocessing here, and this is on my view tab, but I can also go on my analysis and go into tools. There's a lot of ways to get to that. And I'm going to type in dissolve to find the correct tool. Okay, and now I need to choose the input features. And if I have it pulled into my contents pane, then I can use the drop down. If it's not, I'm going to have to navigate to it by hitting the browse. But mine is already here. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in as airports. And I'm going to call this airports by state and then I'm going to set a dissolve field by state name. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and, and run this so you can see what it does and what it should do is it should aggregate all of the points that have the same state name. So when I run this provided I've given it the correct information and I probably should have put that in the right database. I've created a new one for this, but that's fine. Lock that out of the way. See now I've got an airports by state and it looks identical. If I turn off airports, it still looks identical. It is a copy, but if I look at the attribute table, you notice that now um, I have a state name associated with a group. So if I click on any one of these, so I'm going to try to get the U.S. in view here. Make some adjustments here so it doesn't take up everything. So if I click on Pennsylvania's airports, you see all of them are now highlighted because they are selected. So as opposed to before, if I pull up this attribute table, you can see that every single state or every single airport has I'm going to individual identifier. Now we've dissolved all these attributes by that single attribute. So we've put all the features together by one attribute. That's how dissolve works. So another thing I can do with dissolve that is quite handy, again, assuming that our data is correct, um, I'm going to go back to my original airports, which have no, um, again, have no spatial boundaries it's just the whole data set I'm going to go into my tools and I'm going to use dissolve again and make that my input feature make sure you're on airports and this time I'm going to do call it airport K 
count. Not county, but count. And my dissolve field here, again, will be state name. And then I can have it count. So I'll tell it I want to count also by the state name here, and then I want it to be the sum or account. I guess we'll do count. We want to count the number of state names by each. So when I run this, okay, it's going to build a new one. Let me turn off the old one. Again, it looks the same. If I go into the attribute table, you'll see now that it has a count by state. So I'm not sure what the blank one is. Probably ought to figure out what's going on there. Oh, these are things that seem to be in Canada. So I'm not sure why those are on there. Again, could be a jurisdiction issue. But there is all of Alabama's. There's Arizona's. And we can see there's 298 airports now. These are all kinds of airports, including things like heliports and seaports and anything that would be classified as a place where an aircraft could land. So, Okay, now assuming that the data is wrong, and I do know it's wrong, um, I might have to employ another trick here to extract things. So if I want to count, let's say, the total number of airports by state, I'm going to have to do another operation here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up from my catalog. Got another database on here, the United States GDB. I'm going to pull out. We can just do US counties in fact. So we're going to do a total count by county here. So right now, if I do go into airports, I could look at the attribute table and see that there is a county. So I could use dissolve to do that. But better would be to use something like spatial join. Spatial join will work geographically and spatially as opposed to looking at an attribute field. So here where I've got boundaries, now I can, uh, I can create a simple um, algorithm to basically count the number of airports within a given location. Okay, so the easiest way to do that is probably through Model Builder. You could do it through separate tools, but it's really best if you can just build a model. So I'm going to go into my catalog. I'm going to go into my default toolboxes. So here I've got I started one um, and it didn't work out the way I wanted. So I'm going to right click, make a new model. And so now I'm going to pull in my original airports. I'm going to pull in my U.S. counties. Okay, understanding that I'm going to have to do something here um, to pull these pieces together. And the tool you want here is actually spatial join. So I clicked on tools, find my spatial join. I'm going to pull that in. Okay, and I'm going to reorient things just a little bit so I've got a little bit more room. Okay, and this is the, this can be the tricky part um, is what goes into what? If I double click on spatial join, I need a target feature, I need a join feature, and obviously I need an output, and then what operation am I going to do? If you don't get those right, it just does not work. So keeping these straight can be difficult. So you need to think of it like you're trying to hit a target with some object. Let's say you're, you're shooting an arrow at a target. Okay, so your target is going to be what you're shooting at. In this case, um, it's going to be the U.S. County. So if I click and drag that in, I'm going to make that my target. Um, it's going to make a copy of U.S. Counties, and then um, it's going to count the number of hits. So those are like your arrows, which are the airports. Those are your join features. Okay, so the little dots are going to be your join features. So remember, the target is what you're trying to count within the join feature is what you're trying to count within it. It has to be right or it will not work. Um, the next piece is to go into your spatial join and then make some decisions on how you're going to do this. So obviously the target feature is set, the join feature is set. The join operation, we're not going to mess with that right now. The match operation, okay, we're going to do contains. So that means um, it needs to be within the boundary 
We're not going to set a search radius here. We are going to change the output here. I'm going to go ahead and put it in my airport's GDB. And I'm going to call this um, airports by county. Okay. Something like that. And now I'm going to hit OK. And then move this out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and validate that. Make sure everything's valid. If you run into problems, it's almost always has to do with where you're putting it and what you're calling it. So make sure if not, you know, check where you're sending it to, check the geo database. Um, I've had problems with people trying to put it on thumb drives. Sometimes it just does not work. So put it on your C drive, something like that. I validated it. If it works, I'm going to run it. It's going to take a minute because there's a lot of data in that county um, data set. So now it's completed. And I'm going to turn this one off. I'm going to turn off U.S. County, so I don't have anything in there right now. Go back to my map, open my catalog, and then in my airport GDBC, it's, it doesn't show anything, so I do need to right-click on that and refresh. Pull in airports by county, and it looks like the counties. It contains all the county data. The difference is, is when I click on something, Right, so like Twin Falls County, Idaho, you can see that it has a, a new field called join count. Join count will be the number of airports. Um, so that's that's what was generated from that. If I go to my original U.S. counties and I right click on that, you'll see there is no join count field on there. That's not contained within it. But now I have something, and if I want, I can symbolize that. So I can go into my um, symbology. I can change this to unique values, actually not unique values, but graduated colors, and then I can go by join count. Um, you know, obviously this is a not a symbology lesson. It's not what we're going for here, so you can sort of get an idea where most of the airports by county are located. So it's a really useful tool for being able to do that. Um, so when you have that, uh, that's critical. Now, if I want to get even further and I want to start extracting more information, I might need to use something like the select tool. Um, but this should get you far enough that you understand one you would use dissolve, how you, how you would use dissolve, and also how spatial join works. And at least an idea where you use it. And this would be one of the more common instances. Things change on the uh, on the dialogue when you start dealing with polygons and lines and things like crossing certain things. So again, this is meant to be just an introduction to it and one case example of how you would use it. I hope you find this helpful.